Hello everyone, AJ Ryzik here, and today we'll review Linux Mint 17.3 Rosa, the Cinnamon Desktop. Since Linux Mint 17.3 is essentially an update of 17.2, I'm going to focus the review on what's new and what has changed in this release. Also, I've had a few people ask uh, that I review both the KDE and XFCE desktops, so once those become available, I will take a look at those as well. So first, let's start out with a few statistics. Just like Linux Mint 17.2, 17.3 is based on Ubuntu 14.04 LTS, which I believe is a good strategy for them. Uh, the kernel has been updated to version 3.19, which while it may not be the latest available kernel, is a more recent kernel than the 3.16 that was used back in, uh, in version 17.2. Unless you have some very, very new hardware, kernel 319 should just should work just fine for you. Um, of course, if you're a little more advanced user, you could certainly update to the latest kernel, you know, 4.2 or, or whatever, uh, if you'd like to do that. RAM and CPU usage are uh, are down. At the baseline, I'm only using 315 megs of RAM and my CPU cores are at less than 1%, which, you know, freaking awesome. Let's get the desktop out of the way so you can sit down and get some work done. The update manager is one of the things that received an update in this release. Now you can see here from the screen and my update manager, my system's all up to date, so that's all fine, but let me drag over release notes from uh, on the Linux Mint website and talking a little bit about the update manager it will perform some checks for you and it will warn you one if you've got a mirror that is not up to date two it'll let you know if the packages at that mirror are corrupted also it'll ask if you want to switch to a local mirror um, and I, I did this when I you know, right after installation, first fired up the update manager to ask, hey, do you want to switch to a local mirror? Um, yeah, of course, because obviously you're going to be able to run faster. So you click on that and it'll take you to your software sources. And I'll just open that manually. Let's go to, uh, yeah, software sources. And, you know, boom, this will pop up automatically and it shows you know right here the mirrors that I'm using if you want to go in and do a search for what's the fastest mirror and you know what mirrors are available that sort of thing you just click on you know both for your base and then for your main so click on that and it'll you know pop up with a list of all the mirrors and it'll immediately start doing speed tests for you uh, if you want to go and change to a different mirror you just click on that click apply boom you got the fastest mirror I'm not going to run through all that because I've already picked out what the fastest mirrors are for me. But, uh, you know, select those and, um, you know, you're in business. Things are, and it gets you a lot faster, uh, or it can get you a lot faster update. It, a lot of it's going to depend on where your location is and all that. But, you know, uh, really nice that it's easy to find the fastest mirrors. The big change for this release comes from upgrading Cinnamon from version 2.6 to 2.8. So some of the changes in uh, in 2.8, one is our sound applet. If you go and come down and click on your sound applet, you know, boom, you get, you know, I was running Banshee Music Player a little while ago, you know, you get the, uh, 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 the cover art right there, you can go and control play, stop, rewind, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can play with the volume right there. Right here, you've got quick access to your sound settings, and uh, boom, that pulls up. And then also on the sound applet, you can go and right click and do uh, do some mute muting and uh, you know play around with applications and output devices, all that kind of stuff. So we've got that going on. Um, and then let me take a look at my notes here. Um, Oh, on our, uh, you know, our our list of open windows. If you go and hover over it, now it'll show a thumbnail. Um, you know, that's one of those things. Not a real big deal, but uh, it's uh, you know, it's a nice improvement. Um, display settings, very nice now. 
Uh, let me open up display. And there we go. So you can see I'm running two monitors right now. It's real easy to move the monitors around. Um, you know, you can go and make one the primary monitor, make the others a secondary, or you know, move it around, mirror the displays, however you want to do that. Um, not that you didn't have this kind of stuff before, but it's you know, it's a very slick interface now. Everything works. Um, I can tell you that right out of the box, it detected my displays, put them in the correct order that I've got them set up, all that kind of stuff. So very nice on that. There have been a lot of improvements on the back end of Cinnamon, things that you're not necessarily going to see, but do help with the uh, with performance. Uh, one example is the calendar. It used to, the calendar applet used to wake up the CPU once a second to update, even if you were not displaying seconds. That is no longer the case, so you know we improved some uh, some RAM and, and uh, CPU usage right there. Um, a few other things that you know basically the same sort of thing that have been fixed. So you know when I mentioned the the lower RAM and CPU usage at at a baseline, a lot of that has to do with the Cinnamon 2.8 backend. Um, one of the things that you will notice a difference in that is there's better support for QT5 applications. Um, they're going to look more native, whereas in previous ver versions of Linux Mint running, uh, running Cinnamon, QT applications, they look really out of place, and you had to do a little bit of playing around so that they'd, they'd look a little better, look a little more native uh, to match the theming. Uh, that has been fixed, <clears throat> uh, and while QT applications aren't going to look perfect in a GTK environment. They do look much better than they used to. Now, one of the downsides of going with Cinnamon 2.8, and this is really only going to be a temporary downside, is going to do with the applets, extensions, desklets, that sort of thing. And, and that all comes down to a lot of the available applets and, and whatnot have not been updated for so that they'll function with uh, cinnamon 2.8 um, let me let me open up the applets and uh, show you some of what I'm running and so you, you go to installed applets and you can see what's installed and whatnot go to available and I'll show you everything that's online and one thing that I was looking at earlier in the week yeah here it is and a fellow uh, youtuber was doing a little review of this configurable menu excellent menu by the way you can you can create a menu that is styled you know something similar to the Windows 7 the whisker menu uh, a classic menu um, a full screen you know all kinds of different uh, you know different configurations for your menu pretty cool applet to have unfortunately it has not been updated to 2.8 and when I tried installing it on Linux Mint 17.3 it crashed the whole desktop and I ran into that with a few of the other uh, with a few of the other applets. Some of them have been updated. Some of them are working just fine with with uh, the new version of Cinnamon. Uh, you're just going to have to try it and and find out you know what has been updated and what has not. Um, but like I said, this is it, you know it's a a temporary setback. Once you know 2.8 has been out a little longer, it's going to give those developers some time to get things updated and whatnot. So eventually it'll come around, but uh, um, for the early adopters, it's a little bit a uh, little bit of an aggravation there. A fair amount of new artwork has been added, so uh, you got more options for your background. So if you right-click your desktop, go to Change Desktop Background, and you see right there it says Rosa, just select Rosa and you can see all these new pieces of artwork that are available. One of the things that I really like here, if you look at the resolution on these on these uh, pieces of artwork, um, you know, with the exception of this, this uh, Linux Mint up here at the top, the rest of these are very high resolution images. So, you know, those of you that are that are rocking the 
the 1440p or even higher uh, resolution monitors you know you're still going to have a very nice looking uh, piece of artwork and you know looking at some of these uh, some of these images very very nice um, this has long been one of uh, one of the highlights of Linux Mint though is real good background imagery um, and uh, done a great great job on that again of course uh, you can see you've got all the uh, uh, the previous versions uh, you know Rebecca Raphael uh, Quina all of those uh, all of that artwork is available and of course if you want to go and do your own artwork just go here to pictures if you got stuff in your pictures file or just click a plus and you can add a new folder to uh, you know whatever it is that you're using for uh, for holding your images so we got all that kind of stuff going on right there. There have been a lot of software updates. Uh, we're rocking a newer version of XOR, newer version of Mesa. Um, you know, I already mentioned the newer Linux kernel. Um, one thing I didn't, uh, I, I should have mentioned earlier when I was talking about the Linux kernel. Kernel 4.2 is available in the repos. However, uh, because there are some issues with some some uh, some drivers some hardware that is why they did not include it by default um, and uh, uh, one and this one you know impacted me on some other releases was uh, the uh, the what is it? FGLRX which is the uh, the AMD driver for uh, for AMD graphics card the proprietary driver um, you know working with kernel 4.2 it just did not work so uh, um, there's that um, the NDIS wrapper which is so that you can run um, Windows wireless drivers with some of the uh, the wireless cards that are out there um, issues with that one as well um, so if you're not going to run into those issues uh, you know go right ahead and, and update to the 4.2 kernel just you know kind of a uh, a heads up make sure that your hardware is com uh, compatible before you do that upgrade anyway other stuff lots and lots of the software has been updated um, LibreOffice is now run the uh, LibreOffice 5 series um, you know tons and tons of other software that's been updated I mean the, the list could go on so I'm not going to go over every piece of software that's been updated to a newer version but they did a real good job of, of uh, backporting a lot of these softwares um, to this release. And um, I guess on that note, that about finishes this review up. I know it's not real long. Um, you know, really just wanted to talk about some of the new stuff and and uh, uh, stuff that we're seeing in in this uh, in this release. And I've got to say. Um, you know having been playing around with this for over a week now um, everything is working great right out of the box um, I have no crashes or anything like that um, so you know while Linux Mint may not be cutting edge as far as you got the latest this the latest that that sort of thing um, a, there's a lot to be said about having a rock sock, solid release and just being able to sit down and get some work done at your desktop. So that about finishes this up. Uh, please give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the review. As always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below, and I will try to get to it as soon as possible. As I mentioned earlier, once the XFCE and KDE versions of 17.3 come out, I will get to testing those and get those reviewed as soon as possible. And actually, since I've never reviewed either of the two of those, I will probably do full reviews on those. Uh, and on that note, Thanks a lot, and I will see you all on the next video.